city of Paris to Percy Stadium for the 2011 World Judo Championships. Over the last year, judo has been moving and changing at a fierce pace as qualification for the London Olympics really hops up. We've seen the emergence of new stars. We've seen emotion. We've seen drama. But above all else, we've seen some incredible now on the eve of the 60th anniversary of the International Judo Federation, Paris is aiming to put on the best show of judo ever seen. A gala dinner attended by numerous VIP guests to celebrate the anniversary was held at the lavish Opera House in the centre of Paris. At the draw in the historic Hotel de Ville, IJF President Mr Marius Visa launched the championships and fielded questions from the press about the continuing evolution. The scale of the competition in Paris is unprecedented and media and press teams have come from all over the world to cover the event. With over 900 athletes competing under the gaze of the legendary Bercy crowd, everyone is out to impress and to put in the best performance possible. Judo is huge in France and fans have come from all over the country to mingle with others around the world and create a cauldron of tension seldom seen in any sport. And in particular, on the day of the heavyweights, Bercy was full to the brim within minutes of the doors opening. The French public were here to see their hero in action. Teddy Renair won his fourth world title in Tokyo last year, only to be denied his fifth in the open weight when he lost to Japan's Kamikawa. The Paris Grand Slam in February, René crushed Kamakawa to wipe out any suggestion of a bogeyman. René is at home and looking for a record-breaking fifth world title. René, in white, Hernandez. Trying to get his grip, but uh, that's more difficult than you would think against this big man. But he's looking for the sleeve and then that big arm comes over the top and then that's when it's dangerous. So Teddy Renaire then going for his fifth world title. Can he do it? Duye's here to watch him. Two of them with four, but there's a Tramata! Oh! And he didn't stand a chance, did he? And then he's right the way over the top. He was waiting, he was on the edge. And he puts the leg in first of all and then hops the support leg through and over he goes. Beautiful Uchimata, but on. Big pull with the sleeve, he can't score. A minute and a half into this match, Zimmerman. Can he stop him? He's got the lapel, Zimmerman. Renair got the arm over the top. Now then, Uchimata, and he's on top. Looking for the uh, Shimiwaza, and he's got the strangle, and look at that, gets the leverage, and he gets the submission. Zimmerman had to submit in the end. Teddy Renair is on the mark. So Teddy Renair fed that hand through, look at that, he shakes it underneath the chin, and then throws the hips forward, and he had to submit. Teddy Renair, look at the urgency, he's looking for Ippon, all the way here. Moore's head went down there. As soon as that arm comes over. Ouchi! Kosoto! Oh, what a combination! Ouchi Gary, Kosoto, and he just pile drives him into the match. He got the grip he wanted, then the Ouchi, then the Kosoto. And Renair looks to be on the march to his fifth world title. Renair then, in the semi final, against Kim. Athletic looking Kim as well. Can Kim give him any problems? And uh, he's searching for the sleeve and he's got Kim's sleeve. Look how he controls the sleeve and Kim's head is down. And he's dominating right from the start of the semi final. He really does look the business here. Right Superior in the weight and he's showing this Percy crowd that he is clearly the world number one. Oh, so to Gary! Oh, he set that up from the very beginning. And look at that, he says, I am number one. The crowd are going 
absolutely mad, and he did that as he was gripping up. And you've got to ask yourself, can it be Ippon all the way? Up against Renner in the final was Tulsa, Germany's world number three, who was looking for revenge after defeat to the Frenchman in the World Championship final last year. Tulsa won all five preliminary contests by Ippon. In three of his fights, he used his trademark groundwork turn to get the maximum score with a hold. semi-final, Cuba's Brayson had no answer to the strength of Tulsa's ground. Tulsa has been training to fight Renair for a year. What would he have in store for when they met in the final? Teddy Renair then, coming for his fifth world title. Duye, the great Duye watching him and the whole of are watching him to see if he can do it. Can Tulsa stop him in any possible way? This man has been magnificent all the way, if on every match, by the point so far. Can he do it in the final? Only young, still only 22 years of age, and going for his fifth world title. Tulsa, he's going to try and stop him. So now, Rene, got to concentrate. Gonna look for that sleeve grip, then the arm over the top. Tulsa knows it. This is a repeat of last year's world final. He's got the sleeve, and now he snaps it off every time before he attacks. Creates a little bit of space. A magnificent Osoto in the earlier rounds. He's got a fantastic Ouchi as well. Sometimes you've got to change direction with the attack. Ouchi Gary. He's threatened with it. And again, using the feet just to set Tulsa up. Nice edgy matter there from Tulsa. So he's here to give it a fight. He wants this world title. He knows he's got the whole crowd against him. But it doesn't matter. I mean, he's president of the IJF here. Loves his judo. And he's enjoying this moment as much as the rest of us. There's the grip again. Now what's going to happen? As she was at first. Oh, Chigari! And he drives up the back leg. And there's the sixth Ippon. And the world title, the fifth world title to this man, Teddy Renner. And he's put the fingers up. One, two, three, four, and five. And the crowd are absolutely going ballistic. They love him. So he changed direction in the end. And it was a driving Ochi Gary. And he uh, doubled there with the Ashimoto. There's the Ochi. Look at that. Pushing off the back leg. And he just pushes Tulsa. Flat on his back. A beautiful driving Ochi. Good control with the hands. Beautiful control with the hands. And it lands him his fifth world title. And the crowd of the whole of France celebrate. Teddy Renner, five world titles, Olympic champion next year, who could stop him? The iconic David Duye, four times world champion, double Olympic champion himself. And he says, you could beat all my records. I worked hard on my preparation. I wanted to give 100% coming into Paris, so now I'm very happy because I trained hard. I put in a lot of work on my technique and my combinations, and so today I was able to do some nice judo and feel a bit more liberated. Former triple world champion Mikhailin of Russia added another medal to his collection when he won the bronze medal. The other bronze was won by Sung Min Kim of Korea. The under 48 kilos final was a repeat of last year's world final. Japan's world number one Asami and a number two Fukumi. It was Asami who took gold. 
she was on fire all day, scoring Ippon with a variety of techniques. Fukumi, meanwhile, overcame home favourite Josune in the quarterfinal with a wonderful counter-attack. Asami was too good for Fukumi in the final, proving why she's number one. Bronze medals were won by Serviniski of Hungary and Menezes of Brazil. Japan are totally dominant in the female lightweights. The under 52 kilos was another all Japan final and another rematch from last year. World number one Nishida looked favorite to retain her 2010 title after a scintillating display in the eliminations. But it was the number two Nakamura who produced a brilliant drop Sienegi in the semi-final came out on top in the final. Her victory over Nishida promoted her to world number one. The under 52 kilos bronze medals were taken by Romania's Shitu and Spain's Carascosa. There were big expectations on Japan's under 57 kilos world number one. Defending her title from last year, Matsumoto was out for gold again in Paris. Her biggest rival is the number two Montero, who beat her earlier in the year in Baku. However, to the shock of everyone, Montero went for Ippon in her first contest and was out of the worlds. Saito, Japan's world number four, has always played second fiddle to Matsumoto. Both of them were on the same side of the draw and both put on a judo masterclass in groundwork. Japan are renowned for their strength in their waza. Both Matsumoto and Sato followed up their throws with a fast transition into a pin. Inevitably, their meeting in the semi-final would be decided on the ground, and so it proved. A Siatoshi from Sato scored a wazari, which she followed immediately into a hold to score a pin. Matsumoto has been beaten twice this year, and her position at number one is under real threat. Brazil Silva had a great day. The world number seven produced three massive throws en route to the final showdown with Sato. But nothing would be stopping Sato. Her epon with one minute to go ensured Japan had taken the three lightweight female categories and it put Sato up to world number two. Romania took another bronze in the under 57 kilos with Kaporu, while a disappointed Matsumoto claimed the other. France overturned Japan's dominance at under 63 kilos when world number one Ueno was outfought by home favourite and number two Iman. Iman's attack rate was a lot higher than her Japanese opponent and she won a unanimous referee's decision to send Bursi into raptures. Bronze was taken by Van Emden of the Netherlands and Zolna of Slovenia. One of the most exciting female judokas of all time competes at under 70 kilos. Lucy Ducos of France has been electric this year. After winning her second world title in Tokyo, Ducos won the Baku Masters and the Paris Grand Slam without breaking sweat. She was back in Paris to take the big one and Bursi expected nothing less. And in typical Ducos fashion, she skipped through her early rounds using her favourite technique, Ouchiga. In the semi final, Ducos' Osoto against Hungary's Mezeros was timed to perfection. The single sided grip took the Hungarian by surprise. It was one of the throws of the tournament. World number two Bosch of Holland was up against Dukos in the final. But she never really gripped up and was subsequently penalised on three occasions for not attacking. The final could not have been easier for Dukos, who now sits 500 points above the chasing pack in the under 70 kilos rankings. Her last goal is the Olympic gold medal. 
become one of the greats, the cost knows she must win in London. I'm really happy. I wanted to win in Bercy and I succeeded in winning in Bercy. And it's my third world title. It's great. The bronzes were won by number four, Kanahara of Japan, and the number five, Mesuros. Gold in the plus 78 kilos was won by China's Weng Tong, who claimed her sixth world title. Bronze medals went to Japan's Sugimoto and Russia's Ivashenko. The top four seeds in the under 78 kilos category sit head and shoulders above the rest. Ogata Harrison, Chameo and Agua. This time last year, the World Championships went to the number two, Harrison, who beat Agua, the number four, in the final. The number three, Chimeo, then beat Harrison in the semi-final of Rotterdam, but lost in the final to the number one, Agata. Harrison then took revenge on Chimeo in Abu Dhabi. But Chimeo on home ground in Paris in February. Ogata then took the Moscow title to stay number one. And in front of her home crowd, there was no stopping Agua who threw Chimeo and Harrison in the Rio Grand Slam two months ago. There was no predicting what would happen here in Paris. All four had little problems in the early rounds. Japan's Ogata overcame Cuba's Antomachi in her first contest with a clever counter-attack. Harrison of the USA, meanwhile, threw with Haragoshi, a technique that sweeps the hip. Francis Chimeo was lifted by the home support. Using some quick footwork, she threw China Zhang with Oso to Gary. With two minutes gone and a Yuko score ahead, Agua waited for Germany's Maltzan to make the first move. When she did, she went over for it. In her next contest, Ogata spun in with Uchimata, an inner thigh reaping throw. It landed her opponent flat on her back and scored it on. Halfway through her next contest, Harrison also attacked with Uchimata. It was enough to put her into the semi-finals. It was a real judo moment in Chimeo's next contest. Beautiful foot sweep guaranteed a semi-final showdown with Harrison. Agua set up a semi-final with Ogata when she buried Hungry's Jew with Oso to Gary. Who would come out on top? and make it to the world final. Ogata, world number one, in this weight, is Agua, number four seed. So, two left-handers together, and uh, looking for the opening. Ogata twice with the Ouji, was Ari score. So now, straight into the hold down. Agua is having all sorts of problems. There was the Ouji, Ouji Gary that uh, started it. And she controlled the top half, Right from the beginning, Ogata. And look at her looking at the uh, clock there, seconds ticking away. Rosari was at the corn, and she's through. Agua loses it. Harrison, defending world champion in white, going forwards. Oh, Uchi Gary and Chimeo, the number three C, takes it down for Yuko. And so now, Harrison has got to get that one back. Oji Gary there, driving off the bat there. So two minutes to go. So they keep beating each other, these two. In all of the tournaments, see an Aggie attempt there from Harrison. Oh, Soto, she's looking... Oh, now then! Oh, well, that was a big Harai, Makakomi, on the edge there. And it was Ippon, if it was anything, but... Uh, 
Now, Chimeo coming forwards. Chimeo almost over for the Osoto again. Eight seconds left on the clock. Chimeo, can she hold on? Harrison looks at the clock as well. Chimeo knows she's got it. And Chimeo is through. In her bronze medal fight, Harrison threw 2009 world champion for Kirk of Holland for Yuko. They secured the bronze medal, but it was not enough for Harrison. Just over a minute into Agua's bronze contest, the Brazilian produced a piece of magic. As with Harrison, bronze was not what Agua had come to Paris for. So the final of the under 78 kilos category Ogata then against Chimeo. Chimeo, look how determined she looks. In front of her home crowd, and she is really up for this. Last time out, Ogata was the winner. Ogata coming into this as the number one seed. Chimeo is the number three seed. But, in front of her home crowd, what can happen? Oh, she uh, threatened with the Ashiwaza there. And Chimeo straight into the attack. And it's unusual to see the Japanese out as she was it, but uh, Chimeo taking the fight to Ogata. So, so strong, Chimeo. She was the one that I said, oh, look at that, Kiyoshi Farai. And that, in the final of the World Championships, was absolute magic. She can't believe it. The French can't believe it. The coach can't believe it. And tears of joy because she is world champion. That was a real opportune Diashi Barai and in the final of the world championships, can you believe it? She was moving away from her, Agata and she just burst into tears. She cannot believe it. That is absolute judo at its best. The highest ranked fighter in men's judo is the spectacular Sobarov, Uzbekistan's under 60 kilos world number one. Since winning Moscow last summer, Sobarov took the world title in Tokyo, followed by the Asian Games, Baku Masters, Paris Grand Slam, and the Moscow Grand Slam again this year. Sobarov will be looking to extend his 30 fight unbeaten run in Paris. Last man to beat him was Hirioka, Japan's number three, when they fought in Rio last year. Hirioka was looking good this year, winning the Dusseldorf Grand Prix in Sobarov's absence. They're on opposite sides of the draw. Will they meet in the final? Sobarov then, great Sobarov. And drops Sianagi and he drives him onto his back. Hirioka, left-handed fighter. He can go left and right though. So what's it gonna be? Left Sony, no, drop Sienegi! Beautiful. Sobarov. Kochi Gary! Oh, brilliant. A strong weapon from these two. He's got the lapel now. Drop Sienegi! Oh! Hirioka! Sony Sumi on the left! Brilliant! What's it going to be? Sumigesh! And the arm lock! He's got the Juji! Brilliant transition there from Sobarov. He had the arm straight away. Kouji! And he drove off the back leg. Sobarov, arm over the back. Come any direction, Ashiwaza! Oh, brilliant Ashiwaza there. Opportune stop there. Hirioka. Ouchi this time! Hirioka. Great ball. Tomanagi! Oh, it's a clean it ball! Semi final then, and Sobrov, you go up. Him though, giving him a fight. Oh, Ouchi Kouchi! Oh my goodness, they've given it bump for it. Kim says, look at that. Look what I've just done. I've thrown the world number one. Sobarov is unbeaten. Has been for a year. And Oji Koji from Kim drives him. But was it an Ippon? Well, so the um, 
Well, the video referee steps in. It's not an impact. It's a Wazari. Sufferoff reads again. Can he get it back? Seconds ticking away. Oh, it's the last second. And he's got an impact from Kim. The great man has pulled it out the bag on the last second. One second on the clock. The Korean coach cannot believe it. Sopharov, well, he did the same. Oh, gee, but this time he did the leg grab and he rolled him over. And look at that despair. Sopharov wins it, goes through to the final, and Kim says, what about that? So that's the uh, closest he's come to losing Sopharov, but he is still unbeaten. And who can face him in the final? Just over a minute to go then in the golden score. And Hirioka searching for his grip. Cho, though, fighting very, very well. It's very even so far. Just one score will decide it. Oh, Yoko Tomanagi, it was lightning. Oh, see Nagi, and it's Ippon given. Hirioka is through to the final. That was brilliant stuff on the edge of the area. And Cho says, what happened there? Look at this. Yoko Tomoy comes up. His foot just starts inside, but it was enough. And he's through to fight Sobrov. He was the last man to beat Sobrov, but it's the dream final, the final we all wanted to see. Can he do it? Bronze medal fight for the under 60 kilos. Muskiev, oh! Well, Summer Gase there, he takes him over. And he scores a nip on on Choi. Muskiev gets the bronze. Great Zantaraya fighting for bronze. Oh, massive Surigoshi there. And look at that head go down. Talk about following the head direction. And look at him, he throws it forwards. And Kim follows him. And Zantaraya says, well, it's not enough, but it'll do. Final then that everybody wanted to see. Sobarov. Hirioka. Hirioka, the last man to beat Sobarov. Now Sobarov has the sleeve, arm over the back. And this is where he is the most dangerous. Hirioka knows it and uh, not too keen to go in there. There's an Uchimata from Sobarov. And Hirioka, well, he rides it, but he doesn't want to follow through into Niwaza. Sobarov, the most consistent male at the moment. Number one ranked in the whole world. As a male judoka, and he's looking now. Well, he can go left and right, and he was looking for the Sienagi there. Hirioka can feel it, and there was the spinning Sienagi from Hirioka. That was very close. There was a little bit of a delay there. So no score given. Sobarov. The defending world champion, Hirioka. 30 seconds to do something. There's a big Koshikaruma there. Sobarov. Massive. Full commitment, going for Ippon all the time. Hirioka also going for Ippon. That normally means that somebody is going to go. Koji there from Hirioka. It's very close. Arm over the back, Sobarov. Now what's going to happen? Normally something happens, Kosoto! Oh, and he's got the score he wanted. Was Harry score? And Sobarov has done it again. He's pulled it out the bag again, and he's got his second world title. He just clutched Harry Oka to him, and he drove him over onto his shoulder, and he got the Was Harry that he so badly needed, and Harry Oka couldn't stop him. Sobarov, well, look at the pain on the coach's face there. Sobarov says, second world title. So can he win the Olympics next year? That's the question. And Mr. Marius Visa presenting the gold medal to Sobarov. Sobarov then still got it all to do in a year's time. At under 66 kilos, the reigning world champion was Japan's Morishita. He came through the pack to take gold in style last year in Tokyo. In Paris, Morishita started well with big Ippons in his first two contests. However, against the unknown Moldovan, Soroka, 
Morishita attacked and was counted for Ippon, thus ending his title defence in favour. In the end, it was the silver medalist from last year, Kunya of Brazil, and Morishita's Japanese teammate, Ebenuma, who fought it out in the final. With under two minutes gone, Ebenuma came in with a hopping Uchimata and scored Ippon to take his first world title and leave Kunya having to settle for silver once again. Bronze medals went to Cho of Korea. And the ever consistent Russian Bogishev. At under 73 kilos, the Korean world number one Wang was looking to bounce back after his defeat in the semi-finals of last year's world championships at the hands of Japan's Akimoto. Wang is one of the most naturally gifted fighters of his generation, and with two trademark Tomonagi Ippons in the opening rounds, he was looking on fire. After another Ippon from Anuchimata in the next round, it seemed like everything was going to plan. But in a cutthroat game like judo, you can't take your eye off the ball for a second. And fortunately for Wang, he found this out the hard way. Against the Grand, the young French up-and-comer got caught napping and was thrown with a fast Uchimata for Ippon. Just like that, he was gone. He'll have to go into the Olympic Games with a taste of defeat in his mouth. In the end, it was another up-and-comer, the Japanese Nakaya, who triumphed in Paris. After some scintillating judo in the knockout stages in which he scored three big Ippons, Nakaya came up against his teammate and reigning world champion, Akimoto, in the semi-finals. There he upset the apple cart with an Oso to Gary for Wazari and hung on to put the place in the final and relegate Akimoto to fighting for bronze. In the final, Nakaya then outmaneuvered the silver medalist from Tokyo, the Dutchman Elman, to earn a tactical win on penalties and take his first world title. Meanwhile, the Uzbek Jurakabalov shocked Akimoto to take one bronze, whilst the Grand gave France the other. At under 81 kilos, however, there was no such disappointment for world number one, Wang's countryman, Kim. Kim successfully defended his title from Tokyo without ever looking in trouble. In the eliminations, he was ruthless, dispatching all comers with a wide range of techniques. In the final against the surprise package of the category, Miralovic, he scored a Wazari from Osai Komi, which proved enough to give him his second world title. He'll now be praying he can keep this kind of form going into London. Kim's main rival, Galero of Brazil, had to settle for a bronze medal, which he took in style against Azerbaijan's Rajabli, as Macedonian Toma took the other. Number one at under 100 kilos is Japan's Anai, who was defending his world title from last year. Two stunning Ippons in the elimination set up a last 16 clash with Olympic champion Sirakidzi of Georgia, who was returning after a year out of action. Anai could not cope with Sirakidzi's unusual style and went over for Ippon with a minute to go. The biggest shot came from Russia's Kaibaleov, the world number five, who had the tournament of his life. He won five of his contests by Ippon. In his fourth contest, he executed an incredible standing Ippon CNA. And in the semi-final, he pounced on Belgium's Van de Geest, arm-locking his opponent, going through to the final. Up against him there was 2009 world champion Rakov as it stands. Kaibaleyev saved the best until last. 
dropping underneath Rakov with one of the throws of the World Championships. Move Kaibaleev up three places to second on the ranking list, hot on the heels of Anna. Bronzes went to Krapelik of the Czech Republic and Georgia's Syracuse. The under 90 kilos category has been simmering for the last two years. And now, finally in Paris, it's come to a head. Japan's world number two, Ono, is back. Close on his heels is Nishiyama, the number three. However, the biggest challenge for both Japanese fighters is Iliadis, the new world number one. One year ago, Ono was the hottest judoka on the planet, going a year unbeaten and winning his fights with some of the biggest throws in the world. His teammate Nishiyama was always the understudy to Ono, a young pretender, and he would always lose to him. The biggest shock at the Tokyo World Championships came when Ono crashed out early on. His obsession to become world champion had been stopped again, culprit was Iliadis. Iliadis surprised everyone by winning the world title. In the final, he crushed Nishiyama. The aging Ono plummeted after the Worlds. After defeat in both Paris and Baku, everyone speculated that Ono was finished. Nishiyama's breakthrough came this year in February, when he won the Paris Grand Slam in style. Iliadis, meanwhile, was going from strength to strength and regaining the form that won him the Olympic Games in 2004. In the final of Moscow three months ago, Iliadis and Nishiyama met in the battle to replace Ono as number one. He went to Iliadis and promoted him to elite status. The final twist came in Rio two months ago, when Ono surprised everyone by winning the Grand Slam. 31, surely this is Ono's last chance of World Championship gold. Iliadis then, back to the form that won him the Olympic title in 2004. World champion last year, and now, well, just throwing everybody in a massive Sienaghi! Oh and uh, Ramarenko didn't have a chance with that. He just went straight under for the CO. Look at that, readjusts his hips and drives him exactly where he wants him on his back. Looks a bit like Koga's technique there. He throws his head between his legs and somersaults. sana has got to go forward now. He's a Wazari down. Iliadis just coming from every direction. Now he's got the sleeve, Iliadis. Where's he going to come from now? Vasana doesn't know what to do with him. Iliadis, oh, as she was there. Oh, it was a driving Oji there from Fasana. And Iliadis moves out the way and he just dashes him and hand assists him onto his back. It was brilliant stuff. He just drives him down there. Tewaza. Just one minute to go then in this semi final. And Denisov hasn't let him anywhere near so far. Now, what's going to happen? Oh, anything can happen. Is it going to be Orinagi? Yes, it is. And he just lifts him. He assists him with his leg. As soon as he had the arm around the pack, that was amazing stuff. And he's asking the crowd to applaud him. And quite rightly so, too. That was brilliant. Demisov never let him close for the whole contest. He made the mistake of letting him get his arm around the back. The Orinagi started. Then he lifts his leg. And Iliadis is into the final, and he looks brilliant. So who could stop Iliadis winning his second world title? And he's looking for the arm over the top. Oji Gariono! Oh no, now looking for the Ashiwaza! Oh, lovely lifting Ashiwaza there from Ono. Louis he's saying? Take advantage of him coming forwards. Oh no, now got the grip on the same side. What's he going to do? Drop Sinagi! Rekov goes over. And that puts Ono into the semi-final. 
Yama. Handed. Watch the sleeve and the lapel. Oh, look at that. Tashi was up. Yama looking for the line for the Uchimata. Oh, look at that. Ouchi Gary. There's the Ouchi again. Changes direction. Brilliant stuff. What a change of direction that is for Nishiyama. So Nishiyama doing all the attacking here. And Ono just can't quite get to grips with this. So he's getting a second penalty there. You go on the board. It's enough to put Nishiyama through. And a little apology there from Nishiyama, but it's him that will fight Iliadis in the final. World number four Denisov couldn't live with Gonzalez, who won a bronze medal for Cuba. Oh no, then, Ayuko down in this bronze medal fight, and uh, Lee going underneath, and look at that. Yoko Satemi, and he scores Iwasari. So now, Ayuko and Iwasari down. Seconds ticking away. Kemp Ono, well, can he create a miracle? Yes, he can, Uchimata. And it's Ippon scored, and Ono pulls it out the bag. He was Ayuko and Iwasari down. And Ono must reflect, look at the look on his face there. He says, well, I should have been more than this, but uh, I should have been world champion. Probably my last world championship, but this Uchimata says it all. World bronze medal to finish on, Lee can't believe it. And Ono really should have won more than this. And it's the changing of the guard, and Nishiyama will represent Japan in the final with Iliadis. The crowd really up for this. Iliadis in the final against Nishiyama. Nishiyama in blue, Iliadis in white. Iliadis has been on the most devastating form all day. I think every fight has been a different te technique. And now in the final against Nishiyama. Last two times out, Iliadis has been the winner. Last year's World Championship final and also in Moscow. And Ochi Gary attempt there from Nishiyama. He wants to get close, Iliadis, to Nishiyama. Opposing styles. Nishiyama wants that little bit of distance, and then he explodes in with the Ochi. So Iliadis has got to be careful. He knows that. Nishiyama, the young pretender. Beautiful as she was, uh, lovely Ochi. Got a good Uchi Mata. But Iliadis. He's the man of the moment. One of the all-time greats of his generation, that's for sure. Can he be one of the all-time greats? Certainly got the potential. And he's a gentleman to boot as well. Arm over the top, Iliadis. Nishiyama, Ouchi Gary. Now he's pulling him in. Iliadis. Oh, he's caught him again. He went for the Uchimata, went across for the Ashi Maruba. Look at him again. He says, you can celebrate with me. I am the number one. And they're standing on their feet celebrating with him. And the celebrations begin. Iliadis has been absolutely devastating all day. Every fight was a different technique. And he went Uchimata, Ashiguruma, and he just drove them over. Look at that. That's the kind of man he is. Nishiyama and says, I'm sorry about that, I had to throw you for it, but it was beautiful technique. And he regains his world title, that's his second world title. In the Addis, that's got to be one of the greatest displays of judo in a world championship ever. And can he get his second Olympic title? One has to say, Iliadis is a superstar. I don't know what I feel, this is big, big happy. I want to say uh, thanks for my coach, for my family. Uh, this is present for my country, you know, because you now it's difficult uh, times in Greece and this is medals for my wife because she waiting baby. This is nothing. I know one other, you know, I'm really, really happy. What a tournament it's been. Judo really is one of the most unpredictable and exciting sports in the world. Kim did it again. Mayo was magical. Wang went for Ripple. Matsumoto is losing her aura. Soborov avoided defeat. Just. 
Olympiacos must win the Olympics. Renner is out to make history. Judo has a superstar on its hands. His name is Ilias Iliadis. Join us again for the last day of the championships at the team event, where everyone has one last chance to win a world gold medal.